We've got some fresh new young talent. Hey guys, Brandon LaBeouf with Noel Tech Training, here for the very first time for TFB TV. What I want to talk to you about today is a little known topic called Glock reliability. I know, right? Well, Glocks are reliable. We can pretty much all agree on that, right? Now, am I going to drone on for the next 10 to 12 minutes telling you how great Glocks are and how reliable they are? No. My sharks go to at least mid-thigh. I'm not ridiculously, ridiculously good looking. And my name isn't James Reeves. But truth is, that's basically, yeah, what I'm saying. What I'm hoping to bring to you today is a little bit of insight into a population of seven Glocks that collectively have about 120,000 rounds through them over a period of about four years. We want to look at a couple of things. Obviously, how reliable have they been? What malfunctions have we experienced? How many rounds have been through each gun? What have we done from a preventative maintenance standpoint? As well as, what has our actual maintenance been? Is it in keeping with kind of industry standards or, or what people believe it should be? Um, and then just any other anomalies or, or, or outliers that we have with these guns. What, while there's a lot of great information about Glock reliability out there, most of it is one, maybe two Glocks that go through some type of burn down where they get 1,000, 2,000, maybe even 5,000 rounds dumped through them in a day or a weekend or a 30-day T&E cycle. There's definitely data to gain from that type of test or that type of experience. There's also something to be said about the length of time. These guns have been handled by literally thousands of people. To date, we've probably had over 100,000 different people cycle through our business. Now, obviously, not all of them have shot these Glocks, but the point is, is these guns have had a lot of different ammunition fired through them, a high round count. They've been handled, dropped in a much more organic sense, if you will. I mean, yes, I could drop it five times from the roof of my barn, but that's somewhat artificial, and it's somewhat accelerated. We have seen some trends in here, and we're going to talk about them. So... Let's get cracking lacking. First up, it's going to be the Glock 17s. Collectively, these two guns have 42,190 documented rounds. So about 50,000 rounds between the two. You will notice one of them does not have a stock slide. That's because this one experienced a catastrophic failure of the slide after a double charge round. That's something to be attributed to the ammo, not to the gun. The gun actually did its job well. It contained everything. The shooter wasn't hurt. Magazine blew out believe this, the barrel was slightly bulged, but the slide was visibly cracked. So we completely discarded the entire upper, got a new slide, all new parts, um, and then changed all the internal guts of the, of the receiver. Other than that, this one, we put into service uh, June of 2015. We replaced the slide. Was, the slide was replaced right around 3,000 rounds was when that, when that happened. After that, it did everything fine. We were good going, good going. Trigger spring was replaced about a year ago at about 8,000 rounds, okay? Um, other than that, we put a new striker spring in shortly thereafter, and it's been, it's been trudging along. So right now, the only thing that's really been done with it is uh, what, was, what was changed in the top. Uh, the second one, this one's going to be entirely stock. This has all the original main components, uh, including the original Glock Knight sights. This one has 23,757 rounds through it. So right around 25,000 rounds through, through this one. These are both Gen 3s. It was also put into service in June of 2015. So actually three years, not four. Um, random thing, at about 1,000 rounds, the slide stop spring broke. It had to be replaced. Why? Who knows? Could have just been a bad batch of springs. But at a thousand, roughly 1,000 rounds, that randomly had to be replaced. Um, other than that, it did fine until about 8,000 rounds when we replaced the fire and pin spring. I'll tell you that of the times we replaced the fire and pin springs in these guns, never was it because the fire and pin spring broke or striker spring broke. It was mainly because of the assortment of ammunition that we have come through here. Sometimes we start getting light primer strikes. And honestly, rather than trying to throw away a batch of ammo, we just changed the, the uh, striker spring and that typically resolves the problem. So it's really more of a function of a troubleshooting technique than it is any indictment of, of the gun itself. About 8,000 rounds. It's clean. Clean, 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 clean. Another new striker spring about, about a year later. Striker spring was replaced again in January of this year. 
And that's really it. Very little maintenance, or very little parts changing on either of these Glock 17s. Glock 19s. Now, with the Glock 19s, you'll see a, a significantly more use, and that's primarily because these are the primary guns that we give to new shooters that are renting guns to take a concealed carry course or people in. We get a lot of business, probably 50% of our business is what I call new nevers. People who have never shot a gun or are new to shooting, they're from out of state, out of country. We're here in New Orleans. People come here as tourists. They want something cool to do. They come out range and shoot guns for the very first time, which is great. It's something I love. Most of them we have shoot either a 19 or a 17. The majority of the use from the 19 comes from people who are renting the guns uh, to complete their concealed handgun permit course. They're new to shooting, they want to get their permit, so rather than have them go out and buy some random gun that's probably not going to be the best choice for them, we let them rent our guns. Most of them we start at a 19 because we know probably 90% of the shooters out there, ultimately the 19 or a gun very similar to it is going to be the right choice for them for their needs. Uh, we don't recommend guns to people here. Uh, what we do is kind of help guide them along the path to self-discovery of the gun that's right for them. I know that sounds real, real touchy-feely, but what I mean by that is we assess the person, we ask them questions, we give them things to ponder and think about and help guide their decision so that they decide they want this gun rather than just taking our word for it because we're on this side of the counter. Between these two guns, one a Gen 4, one a Gen 3, we have 49,903 rounds on paper, so about 55,000 rounds between these two guns. Looking at the Gen 4, it is entirely stock. It's all the, the um, original, you know, original primary components. Uh, this one was put into service June of 2015. It has been in service for 1,245 days, an average of 25 rounds a day. That's just our days open for business. That's an average little data point. It has, at 6,000 rounds, we changed the extractor and striker spring. At 8,652 rounds, we changed the striker, trigger, and safety spring. Other than that, everything's original. So this one, again, has 31,941 rounds. So about 35,000 rounds on this gun. Uh, barrel still shoots straight. All of these guns are still as accurate as they were the day they came in. 30,000 rounds, and we kind of preemptively changed a few springs. That's it. No failures of any kind. This 19, as you'll see again, does, does not have a stock slide. Experienced the same failure as this. And I say it experienced a failure because it wasn't its fault. Double charge round, crack on the slide, change the slide and all its components, change the internal components of the receiver, and it's back, in, it's back in business. This one has 17,962 rounds, um, about half of what the Gen 4 has, because this is the more popular one. Um, this one, <clears throat> at 4,000 rounds, we changed the slide. So at about 4,180 was when the slide cracked. Um, at 10,000 rounds, we put in a new slide stop trigger bar. 11,830, we put in a new striker spring. And at 15,385, we change the striker spring again. Again, remember, the striker spring changes aren't because they necessarily failed. It's because we were experiencing some ammo issues, and that's the easiest thing. A spring's a couple of bucks. And sometimes when we change one set of springs, we'll just change them all to kind of restart the calendar, if you will, on the, on the preventative maintenance cycle. So that's the Glock 19s. Glock 26s. Significantly less usage on the Glock 26s. These are all original stock, except for the sights on this one, which have some, um, I believe these are XS sights. No, actually they're not. They're some type of I-dot sights, um, night sights. These collectively have 7,255 between the two. And that's because, again, unless someone is simply trying this out to see if it's a fit for them, which it often isn't, these aren't really getting a lot of use. Remember, the smaller the gun, physics is working against you. The bigger the gun, physics is working for you. You have more grip, more leverage on the gun because I have more, more mass to put on the gun and also the gun itself has more mass. So unless someone has a need for really, really, really deep concealment, they really don't have a need for a Glock 26 or you know anything in that size. So between those two, like I said, no parts, breakages, or changes on anything 
with either one of those guns. Um, they've only got 7,000 rounds between the two of them. They've been cleaned, and that's about it. Then we have the Glock 43. I love this little gun as a shooter. It, you, it, I know I just said physics is working against you. You would think this would be the hardest gun to shoot. For some odd reason, I, I, I see a lot of success with this gun. Um, when I take it out to the range shooting 25-yard B8 bulls, I'll typically shoot a slightly higher score with this than I will with, with my Glock 19. I, I don't, it's a weird thing. Um, but, again, single stack, small magazine capacity, not a whole lot of grip. If you've got big hands, it's, it's going to feel like your hand's swallowing it. This gun has 6,912 rounds to it, so about probably 7,500 rounds to it. At 2,050 rounds, the slide lock broke. So we've had two slide lock breakages out of seven guns, randomly, early on. Well, that tells me you got to realize the slide lock spring is just a little piece of bent metal. It's not a spring like you would typically think. The hardening process or just the quality control on that particular piece of metal may not have been where it was supposed to be for those particular batches. They come in in, in big batches. At 5,485 rounds, we changed the striker spring. And that's the only thing that we've done to the Glock 43. Between these seven guns, we have about 125,000 rounds. And as I told you in the very beginning, the moral of the story is Glock as a brand is, is definitely in, in the top echelon of reliability. It's what we see, the, the, it's the predominant brand in law enforcement, overseas contracting. Military units have started to adopt it in Massé. Um, you talk to most respected defensive instructors, the majority of them carry a Glock, most of them a Glock 19. If they carry something else, they will probably say, yep, Glocks are reliable. There's not too many people out there that can provide any type of evidence that Glocks are anything less than ultimately reliable. And remember, reliability doesn't mean 100%, okay? It's reliable, it's not guaranteed. So that's a little bit of information about our Glocks here in, in the rental calendar, uh, cabinet. We're gonna be bringing you a bunch of different guns. We've got um, a whole cabinet full of them, but we got Hudson 9, Silence Crow Maxim 9, we're going to try to let these guns amass a certain amount of usage and then again look at them. Now, we have started keeping a lot better records since we know we're doing this. So we'll have the types of ammunition used, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is for people who really like to geek out on some of the finer details of it. And for those that might be, you know, not 100% sold on if Glocks are reliable. But I'm here to tell you as someone that's been carrying one professionally, personally, and selling them and renting them and pretty much involved with them in every capacity, use them as overseas. Um, Glocks, are, Glocks are where it's at. As always, you guys be vigilant, be prepared, and y'all stay safe. All right, hit it.